and Gajaganashi Bangi Gai. So I'll speak a little English too. Hello, all of my relatives. It is indeed a good day. So this was once a petroglyph uh, that comes from petro, stone, and glyph to write. Later it was transferred to a Wigwasabak, a birch bark scroll. And today we're using PowerPoint. So the media changes, but the message is still very much the same. Uh, Degana Wida, the great peacemaker, said, in every one of your deliberations, in every one of your decisions, you're going to have to think seven generations into the future. Do we have any bead workers, sewers, quilters? What happens when you run out of thread? And you tie the next piece of thread to it? There we go. Then it becomes one piece. It's on a gobadoon. It's to tie it together. Probably everyone in this room has had this experience of listening to someone talk about living a certain way, doing things a certain way, and then you have observed them live quite a different way. Maybe even in the opposite direction. Contradictory lifestyle. Saying one thing and then doing another. For Anishinaabe, if you are honest, I will see it in how you lead your life. There were people who were waking up in Israel, in Europe, in North and South America, with this feeling of dread. That they were all descendants of Holocaust survivors. They didn't go through the Holocaust, but they were descended from Holocaust survivors. And as they began examining this scientifically, they process stress differently. They process anxiety differently. Their body creates different chemicals. And they, they began looking at this, and you can prove it now that if you go through something incredibly traumatic in your life, all of those chemicals that are produced when you're going through these ex experiences will literally alter you physically. My family, they're from the Mikanakwajuing, the Turtle Mountains. They're the Mashkode Bijiki. The, the Plains Bison took very good care of us. They gave us clothing, they fed us, they gave us a home with our, uh, our lodges. Would it be a very good idea to go out and kill all of the buffalo? You would be catastrophically stupid, huh? <laughs> you would be incredibly, incredibly dumb. This idea of going easy on them is something we've all heard about our history, about our, our way of being. Take only what you need and leave the rest behind. Take only enough to feed yourself, to clothe yourself, to create a home, to feed those around you, and then leave the rest behind. For them, this word nin, I, me, myself, in a spiritual sense, that's something that they said, I will reserve this term for the Manadu. Only the Creator can say I, excluding you. Anishinaabeg can't. Anishinaabeg are all related. When our ancestors sat with, e with each other in the mid-1860s, these were people who had killed each other's relatives. You have killed someone I hold very dear to me, someone who I loved. I'll never get them back, and you were the one who did it. And it wasn't just the Dakota who did that to us, we did that to the Dakota as well. And when they sat together, and they sounded the drum, it became both of our heartbeats playing at the same time. When they lit the opwagan, the chinupa, the smoke that came out, that was both of our breath. The, the red pipe stone, that was symbolic of our, of our blood. And at that point, they said to one another, I will never raise my hand to you again, no matter what happens.